amazing, beautiful souls. I'm going to talk a little today about golden oyster mushrooms. I'm hiking back now to a spot that um, always has them, um, not necessarily in the best shape, but come and join me on my hike to find my golden oyster mushrooms. to one of the spots where um, I could have found golden oyster mushrooms before and um, although there are some here they're still pretty small so there are quite a few of them here there's only maybe one or two down here that I would actually take so a little bit about golden oyster mushrooms. Um, they are actually an invasive mushroom. They're from originally the um, Asian, I believe like Japan, China, Russia, um, and they somehow made it over here. Um, I love them and I love that they're here, but a lot of um, foragers call them invasive. So um, there are other type of oyster mushrooms. Um, there's a white version and then an, um, they call it an, I think an elm oyster, but it's really not an actual oyster mushroom. So like I said, this one is actually about the right size and the right, um, I would, you could let these get a little bit bigger, um, but these will be delicious. Let me see if I can pop this one off. Most of the time you can just pop them right off. Um, also be aware when you're mushroom hunting to look for poison oak and poison ivy because um, right here this looks kind of like this but this is actually um, Virginia creeper I believe um, so I am aware that it's not um, poison ivy. So here are oyster mushrooms um, and these like I said are golden or yellow. So one of the identifying factors is, is they grow on trees, not on the ground. Um, so you always find them on some sort of dying or decaying wood. Um, the golden is another sign. That's not always 100% the, the only way to see them. Um, they come from basically one stem point. As you can see, it's coming all from one area here. Um, so that's another identifying factor. Another identifying factor are these um, gills, and they don't stop. If you notice on oyster mushrooms, they actually go, you can see the ribs go all the way down the stem. Hopefully you can see that, if you can see those lines, um, where some other mushrooms that are not edible um, would stop, they would actually stop here, the gills would. Um, so this is another identifying factor. Um, <laughs> is smell. So to me, um, I'm not going to say they smell like Play-Doh, but they definitely have a distinct smell to them. Um, some people say that they actually um, think that they can smell them, or a lot of people say they can smell them long before they actually get to the mushrooms. 
um, and I have before. I've definitely done that with pheasant back, which smells like cucumber. Another way to identify golden oysters is by taking a spore print of a picked mushroom. Um, you do this by laying it on white or black paper and leaving it overnight. Um, you'll see a color left from the spore of the mushroom. Golden oysters leave a pinkish purple print. I will come back a different day to get um, some of these other ones because like I said, these are a little bit too small for me. It's been a little bit cooler here um, and not as humid. Um, so they even, this is when they start to first come out. They are teeny tiny little mushrooms there. I wanted to show um, what to look for if you're hiking um, and you see these are old ones. So these are old yellow oysters and you're going to see they're in clumps. So I talked about white oysters previously and white oysters don't come out in this big of clump usually. Um, occasionally they do, but usually they come out more in twos and threes and not ten and twelve. So these are spent. So a good thing to do when you're foraging is also just to look for signs of things. Even in the winter, um, I'm always on the lookout and watching when I forage um, for different items because you're going to be able to see the remnants of those items. Um, so as I was showing you with the oysters that those are dead, but they're going to get also come out either the next year or like this season, we usually get a couple of flushes um, with the oyster mushrooms. Um, they come out multiple times throughout the summer, usually starting in the beginning of early summer um, all the way through till usually August, September, you're going to get yellow oyster mushrooms. Um, they do like um, lots of moisture, so usually after a rainstorm, a couple days after, you're going to start to see those teeny... Um, things popping out. They're super small, like I said, very, very small. You'll be able to see next to my, my thumb how small they are. This is a perfect example um, to show where um, you're going to sight mushrooms from trails. You don't necessarily need to hike back into deep areas of woods. Um, so I'm just hiking on this trail and you just keep an eye out from little markings. Um, so oyster mushrooms tend to um, grow on usually, the, uh, the golden oysters usually grow on um, dead el or older elms that are dying. Um, and a lot of times the elms are what I call snags or ones that have been um, broken off. Um, I don't know if you can see, there's little white tufts on there. Those are dried up oysters. So just be aware um, as you're hiking, it might not be anything specifically at that time, but there could be mushrooms coming back on that same tree this year again multiple times. Here's another example of older, too far gone oysters, sorry, golden oyster mushrooms. Um, these are definitely way too dry and too old. Um, obviously in a survival situation <laughs> you could eat them if you were starving, um, but as far as foraging and keeping for yourself, um, they are a little far too gone, too far gone. Um, but this is another great example of I saw this from off on the trail, it was a little bit of ways, so the trail is way back over there, but I was able to spot these, and they are another spot that possibly more will come on, and while I was here I also noticed a baby pheasant back with a little daddy long leg. So this is a pheasant back right when it's starting to just come out as a nub. Um, hopefully we get enough 
water or rain. We haven't had much lately, but if we can get some rain, this thing will get big and be a pheasant back, which is also edible. So um, a lot of times on dead trees, you're gonna find multiple um, types of mushrooms, some edible, some not. Um, but once again, a lot of the dead trees will also give you um, places that um, on this one there aren't any, but parts of the tree will also have them growing down on the ground. Um, so when I said that they are only growing on trees, they are only growing on trees, but they can be a tree that is on the ground. So also another good tip. So I wanted to encourage everybody um, to get out and forage. And this might seem funny to show this, but basically where I'm hiking, right next to the freeway or highway or whatever you want to call it um, but I'm in a wooded area that goes on for miles and miles you don't have to live in the middle of nowhere to be able to forage um, it's not the most peaceful <laughs> there are sections of this park that I hike in um, that is very peaceful as you've seen from some of my videos, but um, sometimes you've got to forage um, in places that aren't peaceful, but are very um, bountiful anyways. So thought I would share that with everybody. You just want to be careful when you do forage that you're not somewhere that's been contaminated um, or an area um, you know that's been sprayed or has heavy traffic like I said, I'm pretty far away from where it is. Um, I don't harvest anything right from the road. So just a reminder to get out into nature. Even if you're not foraging, just get out and walk. Put your feet in the grass. Get out there into nature. Mm -hmm.